So a little bit about impact. So you have an 8 iron, right? An 8 iron has 38 degrees of loft on it, usually. Okay. 7 irons, 35. 8 irons, 38. 9 irons, 41. Pitching wedge, 44, 45, etc. Right? That's the new super strong lofted. Now, when a good player de delivers this thing to impact, okay, 38 becomes 28. Okay, 38 becomes 28, right? Because the weight and the, the weight stresses against the hands. And trust me, they're trying to get this thing out, and that that's the feeling you want. You want this sense of overtaking and sense of heft and speed out there, right? But while this thing, you know, while this stress is coming out, as it collects the ball, boom, it's not hitting down on the south pole of the ball. It's hitting, climbing up to the equator. See what I mean? And that's where, when you play with the odd guy in Saskatchewan on a windy day, and he can hit kind of those little bullets, might be a bit of a combination of ball back tick. But it's also that person has the ability to kind of, you know, get to the ball, much like some guy's kind of taking a slap shot. See what I mean? Trail, and you do it beautifully. Trail elbows bent, right wrist is bent. You just don't have the support of left wrist for it. That's why I'm trying to argue with you just a little bit about the grip. And I know you're kind of buying into it, so I'll leave you alone. You'll figure it out. Of course you will. Now, now what I would say to you is you've got the left foot flared and, and the right foot kind of boxed off, right? Because if you read Ben Hogan's Five Fundamentals, that great book right there, that's how that guy liked to stand, just kind of like this. The problem is you're 66, okay? I can't, I can't play from there anymore. I'm 50. Right? So what I do with a lot of the guys that come see me, because you're right in the age range of everybody that comes to my golf school, is the opposite. I get the left foot flared a little, because frankly, here's what's going to happen on the left foot anyway. It's going to skip and slide around. We all wear nubbies. We don't wear spikes anyway. Right? But I'd love for your right leg to be a bit more flared so that you feel like this pelvis, can this belt buckle can face a bit more of that camera right there. You know, the, the pelvis is going to stop, but uh, but a little bit. Yeah. So if you go, if you think, if you ever watch some like old Bobby Jones on YouTube or uh, a lot of classic swingers, Byron Nelson, even Ben Hogan, they almost look like, the, and George Newton, they almost look like their pelvis starts everything. You see what I mean? They don't. They're not. They don't pick it up and then try to turn against it. It's almost like pelvis first. You see, like it's and pelvis first, club head last. So come on in here and put your good hands on it. And if you can get that left thumb on the top right part of that tube, the grip, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So a little bit of a flary right foot. I know you feel like a duck. Yeah. Go ahead. Sack. Just a bit more there and there. Good. That's it. Well, you know what? If you, it, it grip pressure is really thumb pressure. Okay. So if your thumbs aren't pinching, you do whatever you want with your grip. I just don't want your thumbs pinching. Okay. There you go. Good. Now do me a favor. Hang on a second. No, no, you're good. Leave the club there. Okay. Ready? Make a backswing. Okay, good. Make a backswing. What's the problem? The foot in the way? Okay, watch. It's not. It's only a problem if here you let go. Let me show you. You stay there. Okay. If I use your foot as an example, watch. If I make a backswing, you see what I mean? If my hands are the source of motion, Murray, I can't make a backswing. If my hands are oil canned up here, strong fingers, supple wrists, but no pinchy thumbs. Pinchy thumbs are grip pressure. I don't care really how much you hold on here, okay? Pinchy thumbs are the problem, okay? So as I make it, as I start to go, see your foot's just a mere little speed bump in some neighborhood, okay? But if you're, if the hands are the source of motion, then the hips aren't really starting it, are they? Okay, good, all right? So now my foot's a speed bump because I want your hips to get going. Show me. Atta boy, got to do it again. Yeah, flare it out. Good. Good. 
did way better. Good, do it again. A little bit of foot flare, sure. Yeah. That's better. Good. Now hit a ball or miss a ball. Just let's take a look. Yep. It's all good. Uh, <coughs> I don't think so. You know, I mean, that's not far back where you are right now. That's, you know. So. And you can even bring your, you can bring your right heel closer to the skinny white stick. No, your right heel. That's okay. Perfect. Yeah. So flare, yeah there you go. Flare the right foot some more. Right foot. That, that a boy. And just hit one or miss one. Go ahead. Really nice. Hit another one. Okay, hands off, regrip it. When you go hit balls, you know, today, tomorrow, whenever you go hit balls, try to always take your hands off every shot and rebuild it. Okay, so summary pieces, right? Uh, certainly, right foot, flare it out. Good, I know that's going to be visually weird. Left foot, box it in more. There you go. Okay, good. Hippie, show me some hippie. Good. Okay, cool. Let's have a look. So reasonable strikes. Okay. Yeah, we could have went anywhere, but you know that's you know we're not worried about that for the moment. Sometimes being indoors, not worrying about where the hell it goes, is a good thing, but not not too much of it. You know. So if I go back to this one. So this is the first one, okay? This is so first swing. You know, this is this is almost towed in a little, isn't it? So, yeah, the very very first one, okay? The one on the right is the after, okay? So this is where you feel like you know you're duck footed to a degree, right? And so I would even say with this one, you know, you could even tow it in a little, because the more the front, the the more the the lead foot's towed out, the harder it is to turn as well. Does that make sense? But also, you know, you made a great comment earlier, and we'll come back to this in a sec. You made an awesome comment about, pardon me as I walk through here, is you said as long as they don't sway, right? Well, so you, you're kind of coming to me, and I'm exaggerating, with a very toed-in back foot. See what I'm saying? Now think about it. If you have toes outside a heel, now you got something to kind of keep you this way, don't you? Okay. And I'm not seeing a sway issue at all, to be honest with you. Your head's steady as hell. You know, I mean, I'm looking at this going, all right, so this club, and so the grip's a little better, but do you see how the club's on the ground right now? And, 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 I, and I'll tell you why it's on the ground right now, because you're, you're about to swing it, and you're about to re-grip it, okay? Which oh. means to me... A dude not like you hitting it in a fairway bunker is not a, not your favorite shot. I could care less if I hit 160 yards out of a fairway bunker. Like, really, no big deal. Because the club, my club is never, ever resting on anything. I'm never pivoting off the ground. Does that make sense? It's always just waggling from my wrists. Okay? So, you know, I'm loving the fact that the right foot's better. Yeah. You know. Okay. Course. Here's the down view of that, downline view. So that's a, that's a, a way better t hip turn, okay, and way more swing depth. Okay, so that's good. You know, and then you just got to be mi you know mindful not to get too much on top of it, so we don't kind of neck it, right? Because this first one here, that's a really, those hips are so limited. And just one last little check and we'll get outside. 
So your club heads stop at about there. Yeah. You know, so you just, whenever you, when, the farther it goes, I mean, it can go to excess, which yours is even close to excess. You know, some people fold it all up and the club's over here, right? Now you're not doing that, which is good, but n now you have a bit more run up to the ball. You know? But I've always, uh, I like it. Mm hmm. So when I was a little kid, George would teach all of us, and it's been it's a great, and I, I do it with all my juniors, I do it with even some of the pros that I saw, like I had a really good amateur this morning, that a professional lady, and then that dude, Brad, who was you know, an amateur who was kind of struggling, right, he could hit shots, but once this thing, once I kind of, you know, once this club gets in my hand, it's, it's in there, the club never rests on the ground again, next time it, it's going to be in a divot, okay. So, you know, I, I do the, my routine, I might take a little practice swing back here, loosen up, and I'll take my final, and this is for you as well, this is a big deal for you, is this, when you pick a shot, commit, man, because that's all you can do. All you can do is go, okay, whew, last breath, I committed, I know what I want, I'm going to do my best. Now, this club is never going to really be on the ground again, okay, I'm, I'm getting comfortable by waggling, setting my feet. Now, I, I may tap the, the mat there, one. You know what I mean? Tap it, but I'm on on. Oh shit! On a fairway bunker, you know, on a fairway bunker, it doesn't bother me because it's rather than I'm just I'm so used to holding the club off the ground, right? What I saw you do is set it there and kind of go. Right, and I'd rather, if you can, you want to be consistent. Be like Jack Nicklaus. Be like Tiger Woods. They don't rest the club. Be like George Newton. Tour players do not rest the club on the ground, ever. Yeah, commit to, you know, get it on there, and then waggle it. There's me oiling it up, and, and here's the other big thing, okay? I wanted to touch on this. See that, what am I doing with my feet? See this little pressure going back and forth? Well, that little pressure back and forth, Mary, guess what? That's also how I'm going to go and start to put pressure into the ground. When I take this and straighten it, what does it do to my hips? Helps turn them, doesn't it? Right? So this little bit of footwork, when you watch this video later, you'll, it'll make sense to you. This push helps me turn my hips. Right? If I just stand there kind of lock-legged, good luck. See what I mean? Let's go ahead a few outside and we'll call it a session. Here, get your specs. Yeah, I was having trouble with my putting. 